So I share with you some of my considerations about methodical styles. And I've done a lot of hypnotherapy and, and trained people in hypnotherapy for years. And I certainly learned all these methodical uh, configurations to invite people into trance. My conclusion of all that is, um, it's not important which methodology you adopt, as long as you do not disturb people in finding their own path into trance. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing to me is that I go into kind in this kind of mood, I want to invite you, and so building up a field and inviting you into finding your own way in that kind of space yourself, because trans introduction is always inviting self trans introduction. So the people make up their own reality in trans. I've learned some language figures that uh, give us the illus illusion that I know somehow I'm with you in your reality, but certainly that's not true. It's an illusion created that we somehow can um, be to uh, accompany each other while everybody is having in content as well as in process his or her own creating of reality. And this is also a question of transfer. I do not tell I, you, your right arm might be warmer and heavier and to breathe in and breathe out and all these things. Because you all know how to go into trance. So I, it's only important to me to invite you to activate these resources and to find words to specify the mood I want to invite you in, that you do not go asleep too much, for example, or that you don't think you have to relax too much, because trains also can be a very active thing. Uh, this is one thing. So, and um, it's not a very sensitive thing to put people into trains. So, if there are things that are disturbing. I learned uh, when I was, after having been with Milton Erickson, when I first time wanted to put certainly my training, TA training group in trance, that's the first thing I did when I came back. <laughs> and I just started to lie down, you may feel heavy or uncomfortable to see which parts of your body and all this stuff. There was a, a machine, a, a, a constructing machine started <laughs> in the backyard. <laughs> and I thought, oh God, I have to give up. I, I catch caught the wrong moment, but then I remembered, oh, it's all pacing and leading. So I invited everybody in uh, being a child and coming to a construction era where workers are working and especially the boys have been very pleased that they can watch what happens there. And so after a while I said, okay, it's good that they go on with uh, working here. We have something else to do and slowly we go to a silent place where we, so maybe somehow in the background hear that, but it's not what's important to us. And then I did, and then I did the whole trance and some of and it was loud, most of the time. And in the end, uh, two-thirds of them said, there was a machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the beginning, when we have been at the construction era, but later. <laughs> so, and what helped me also very much is that Milton Erickson said to wake up in between is a deepening uh, intervention. So whenever something is disturbing, I say, yes, that's okay. It's coming in and can get out at the same time. And certainly it's, uh, the attitude and notion of utilization, whatever, whatever happens, in order to say, this should not be in our frame of reference while we are doing some kind of trance work. Now we say, you hear the bird. 
the boy bird is singing there, and it's good it's there, so that we can leave it there and direct our attention to something different. Because the way I understood Milton Erickson, uh, his whole approach to uh, trance is this directing attention. So it's this creating reality by directing intent, uh, attention. And this was very helpful for me and is for every content. So working with guided imagery is only one of the exercises you can learn to use your language to guide attention. This is one thing. And the other thing, Eric, uh, Milton Erickson was a bit too much into you have to distract the conscious mind and you have invite the unconscious mind, because the unconscious mind is so wise and it's like a like a natural animal part of ourself who knows. He used metaphor, metaphors like there was a, a horse rider with a horse and he lost his way and in the desert later there was only found the skeleton of the rider, implying the horse did find his, the way out. This, this is uh, maybe this notion has been historical because there was a lot of bullshitting at that time, and uh, it made sense for him to <coughs> bring people out of bullshitting, and it was control to disturb people in control so that can, can they change into parts of their self where there is more creativity, but it must not be unconscious. So conscious mind and unconscious mind, I've translated it is not the, the conscious mind and unconscious mind of psychoanalysis. Conscious mind means habitual pattern of reality. It's, it's the notion of conscious is not very fine. It's, it's more habitual. And unconscious mind is more creative. And both can be conscious or unconscious. So we have a a mixture of definitions here. And I came to the point that uh, I'm interested not in putting away uh, the conscious mind, but in wide cooperation between these spheres, as we have this in the dialogue model of communication. And uh, this is why, for example, when I now do a guided imagery, a focused guided imagery with you, I tell you in advance what I'm going to do with you, that you understand, and your self-organization in putting yourself into trance and focus yourself can cooperate because you know what I try to do. If you agree to it, you will. You are much more potent to do that. And it doesn't disturb at all uh, the process of letting go. And this is the same attitude you, attitude you watched uh, how I introduce a learning conversation. To be very, to very clear, communicate what I try to do and working with a total transparency. So, we have introduction, focused work, uh, re-inviting into everyday realities has the basic three phases and the focused work of the guided imagery will be on uh, my relationship to an organization and I will invite you into six pictures making up a gallery of six picture, pictures three pictures on your own on your own professional development and three pictures on the development of an organization you are relating to. For that, I will invite you first to find an organization you work in or you work for or you cooperate with or whatever that you have somehow have an issue with. To want to clarify how, 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 how does the development of that organization is matching my development, this is coming more together, this is more separating what are the qualities in that. And we uh, look after these qualities by these images and the possible fitting. 
So I invite you, uh, after you have chosen an organization, to keep that quite stable throughout the guided imagery, because if you sing in one moment at your at your two team in your own company, and the second moment at a uh, organization, uh, at a department of an organization, you you switch too much back, much back and forth between categories, and it will get up, might get confused. And then I invite you to come up with an image about you in the past as a professional. You, then you as a, at present as a professional, maybe as we started yesterday, mm -hmm. and you in future. So far, maybe a, an idea comes up, an image comes up. And when I say image, it doesn't mean visual. It also can be a sensation, it can be a sentence, a sound, a song, whatever. I just use the word picture for impressions in all senses. And then I invite, and, and then I invite you into three images about this organization. From where does it come, the past? How do you image it right now, the present? And in what direction are you seeing this uh, organization develop? The future of this um, organization. Can you say that again? I'm sorry. Yeah. Can, can you say again those three things? Sorry. Yeah. The organization uh, past, mm -hmm. present, future. So. And yourself, past, present, future. And if everything works fine, you have, you have six images on your gallery. And then you can step back and look at these six images. And then uh, I invite you to do mirroring, as we did yesterday. You tell the other person about these images and how you react to them. And the other person just uh, listens and tells you what images are arising in the other person's reality <laughs> system, being in contact with your uh, relating to your images. And you exchange that. This is, this is a didactic design for the experience. So you know it, but you don't have to keep it in mind, because I will tell, invite you to each piece step by step, again, while we are on our way, on the journey. And you certainly know how to find your, your own sp space inside, and how you have to sit to feel comfortable enough for half an hour, maybe. And you know, if it was comfortable you did it yesterday, it might help to remember your reality in going into trance yesterday, because this brings you on the track today. And I don't know how tired you are right now, so it's okay to have small pieces of nap in between. And it's also okay to be awakened enough that you can follow my invitations and letting imaging, images coming up in your internal reality system. It's not a question of thinking of images. It's a question of being ready to receive images. And images can be visual ideas, sentences. Tone, something vocal or music or whatever it is you are intuition wants to tell you what it is pointing to. And it might be that you already found that internal space 
from which we could start. It might be that you need the one or the other permission. Nothing has to be perfect. Whatever comes to your mind might have some meaning. And there may also be surprising images. So you are very free and it's okay to follow the instruction. It's like a leader through a park, for example, would lead you. You are free to look at all the flowers or trees. You want to look more closely and still be enough in contact not to lose the leadership and not to lose group, not to lose the focus. And to be enough in contact to come to an end with together with the others and go back. So now after I've invited you on the way to find your own trance. I invite you into the issues you could be in contact with. And this is about me and organization. But there are many organizations you possibly could relate to. So, you may find out with which organization you have kind of an issue, something you you want know more about your relationship, your encounter with this organization. I don't know whether it's immediately popping up which organization, with team, with which group this could be. Is it one where you work in, or one you work for, or one you work with? After some moments, and maybe having the choice between some option, it's okay to choose one of them. If you really want, you can exchange it later after we have done the first part of the focusing. The first part is looking at you as a professional. And you as a professional, you have a history. You have your roots, you, you are in development. You come from the past. And for the first frame we look for an image for, you can find or let yourself find an image about yourself as a professional in the past. And I don't know what past means specifically for you. It might be last year or ten years ago. You decide and find the image representing somehow, even if you don't understand how, me professionally in the past. And then you can move forward after you have put that image into the first frame to the second frame, me today, and you may drift through the presence of your professional life, 
and find maybe a situation or an image or a metaphor or whatever for your presence, for you at present in your professional life. And if you have found that, you can put it into the second frame. And then we go on in time, in tweeting to the future. What will be one day, maybe next year, maybe in ten years? I don't know what future means to you. But I mean you as a professional in the future. And probably you'll find an image, a symbol, whatever, that is pointing to you in the future how it will be, how you will be. And after you have found such an image, put it into the third frame. If one of the frames is not yet filled, that's no problem. Maybe it just comes in later. It's okay to be on a search. Now you step back one or two steps and look at all these three frames. Me in the past, me at present, me in future. You don't have to make much sense of it right now. Just store the images within yourself and you can reflect and share later. Now we are through the first part of the issue. In order to come to the second part of the issue, Remember the organization you have chosen. Is it still the same and you think you should focus on this organization? If you, during our work now, want to exchange it, you can do it now. But it's also okay, just keep it. So I invite your attention now to this organization and what is your image about this organization, how it has been in the past, from where is it coming? Maybe you remember a situation in former encounters? Or you have a symbol or something that points to your understanding of this organization in the past. And after you came up with an image, put it into the fourth frame, the first one, in the organizational area. And then your attention may go to the present, presence, this organization today. How would you put, how would it put in yourself, your intuition, this organization into an image or an image to this organization, how it is at present? Mm-hmm. 
And when you <laughs> found an image, put it into the fifth frame, the second frame in the second row. And then your attention can go to the wondering about the future. Is there any image coming up that is pointing in your view the future of this organization? How would it be? How could it be? And you find an image for that as well. And when you found it, put that image into the sixth frame. And maybe it, an image will come later, or some changes will come later. That's okay. That's a creative, ongoing process. Now you step back and look at the three images on the organization. You don't have to understand. It's okay just to store what you see, what your experiences are, in order to share later, as far as you want. And when you even step one more step more back, you might see all the six images. Three about you, past, present and future. And three about the organization, past, present and future. And keeping these images in mind, you guess that we come to the end of the focus part of the journey. It's, it's like in, with a guide in the garden, who's slowly turning to the exit of the garden. You might want to have a little more time to go in this or that direction, but finally you come to the exit, bringing with you the impressions you had. And because I'm a well-trained hypnotherapist, I have to raise my voice slowly. This is called analog marking to also on a analog level tell you that we now should change our way to reorganize ourselves. Thoughts are more awake and light day orientation, doing it slowly enough in your style to bring your memories with you and slowly to prepare yourself to share with others of your choice. So, also, it's a wonderful place you have been after lunch. You might smell a strong coffee or tea whatever you need to wake up. And as always, some wake up more quickly and get ready immediately. Others try to stretch the comfortable spaces as long as they can and then come back. This is tradition even in other continents to come back.
it's interesting that also if somebody is sound asleep, there's always a part of this person which is attentive. So, sit up a bit so that you help yourself to be a bit more awake. You have memories? Mm-hmm. Something to share? Yes. No, you, you slept? Okay. Mm-hmm. Right here, six, okay. So we pair up with the others pair up <laughs> and you join just one of the group and listen what they are doing. Anything comes up they can say. Pardon? Anything comes up. Anything comes up? Yeah, can you ah, you, it's, you remember something, okay, wonderful. So how should we do it? Again in three, one, one pair, and the others uh, go into three, like we had yesterday, mm-hmm. and have ten minutes for each three, and fifteen minutes for the, each of the pair, mm-hmm. and five minutes just to tell the six images, and your reactions to the six images, the other person listens and registers the images that come up within the other person and just tells without discussing, no consulting, no interpretation, just sharing. Can I check something there? I yes. I think I heard something different from the instruction of yesterday. Yes. So when we tell each of our images, we also tell our reaction. Those the images and and your and the story image. you make out of these images right now, mm-hmm. and the I other person. That. I didn't hear that yesterday. That's okay. Like, and maybe you didn't put it yesterday. No, yesterday. This have not been since instruction yesterday. No, there wasn't. No, no, no. no. Uh, I thought I thought you you compared it with the first seminar. No, no. Yesterday, no. Uh, so somehow I am also inviting you in our culture of mirroring. So it's a multi, multi-layer reflection, building up stories. So, please find two partners, and there will be one pair.